Hey folks, Tony Lockhart here. And in this video, what I'd like to do is to draw some backgrounds. So I'm gonna start first by selecting the bottom most layer. And in the tool properties with the rectangle tool selected, I wanna make sure that I have fill, um, you know, fill shapes selected. So what I'll do is drag and make my rectangle. I'll make sure it's bigger than the actual frame of the canvas because that'll be helpful for later. And after that, I'm gonna choose the next layer that's above it. And I'm gonna go a little bit darker, maybe one, two shades darker. And what I wanna do is start to draw some additional elements and things like that, um, you know, for my, for my little city. So I guess um, with this, what I'm gonna do is, in fact, let me choose blue because this will show up better on screen. I'm gonna come up with a horizon line. And if I hold shift, I can actually draw straight lines. But what I wanna do is to lay down some kind of a grid right here. So I have a little bit of a Dutch angle and I have my, uh, it's my grid right there. So here's the ground plane. And I have, a, I have a pretty good start right there so I know where I'm gonna put stuff. Again, let's go back to the brush tool and there we go. So now that I have a grid set up, um, I'll put this way at the top and I'm not gonna mess with that. Let me go to this layer and I'm gonna go back to my brush tool and again, go for a little bit darker of a gray. And I think what I wanna do is um, probably draw some clouds. Okay, so just go for nice big shapes. I'm not too worried about making everything perfect. I'm also gonna think about drawing some mountains in the background as well. And what I wanna do is to get progressively darker as I get closer to the bottom of the frame. And what that's gonna do is make it look a little bit more 3D, okay? So I've got, I'm just kind of sketching, just having a little bit of fun. Okay, so now that that's set up, I'm gonna go and press this button right over here. It looks like a little triangle circle in a square. So um, this is a vector layer. Um, a vector drawing layer. So what I'll do is I'll do that. Let me go a little bit darker and I'm gonna come with maybe a couple of, so remember since since my angle is like this um, for the horizon line and for the ground, perpendicular is gonna be a little tilted. So I'm gonna come up with a handful of images or silhouettes for the background and they're gonna, they're supposed to look like little buildings and things like that. If I want to, I can erase out some of the details to kind of give it a little bit more, a um, little bit more definition. Uh, maybe I'll put a bridge that goes across like this. But instead of just completely straight across, I wanna try to get some variation in there. And if you want to, you can turn off the visibility of the actual, um, your uh, grid, so that way you're not gonna see it. Anyways, let me go click back on that actual frame and I'm gonna to continue to draw this background. Um, later I can go back and adjust and change the opacity. So if it's not really working for me, that's okay. And there we go, that looks about good. I can always turn on my camera mat so I can see what it's gonna look like. And it looks like I'm in trouble. So let me just, just kind of hide that. And then just put a little bit more stuff right there. So that way it looks a little bit closer to what I want. Okay, now that that's set up, let me bring the bring in some drawing elements that are come a little bit closer. So what I'll do is I'll add another layer right here. Um, this is a vector layer. And I'm gonna go a little bit darker this time. So let's go for about like a 70% gray. And now what I'm gonna do is let's come up with another foreground element. And again, I'm thinking about that angle, thinking about Okay, how can I get some good silhouettes? How can I think about drawing in stuff that is gonna work with, this, with the uh, pieces of art that I put behind everything else in the background as well? Okay, I'm gonna put in some kind of a bridge right there. And um, I don't know, maybe a couple of other things right there. And maybe, let me go brush size. I'm gonna hold O and make shrink my brush size just a bit so that way I can get a little bit more fine detail. A general rule of thumb when I'm sketching, some of the stuff I like to do is to draw with the biggest brush that I can in the beginning 
and then later I'll go back and I'll fine tune everything. Part of the reason I do this is because it makes life a lot easier um, and it doesn't allow me to focus on details. Instead, I could focus on a composition that I feel is pretty strong. Um, so hold O, make this a little bit bigger. And what I want to do is put in another foreground element right there. And maybe let me shrink this down. Hold Shift to get a nice straight line. And then I'll just go back over this. So anyways, um, I'm thinking about perspective. I'm thinking about depth by changing the value. And I'm just sketching, sketching, sketching. I'm putting everything on separate layers. And I'm thinking about, okay, what happens as I get a little bit closer to the camera? How can I start to make some really strong shapes that will contrast against the previous background layer? At this point, I can turn off that perspective grid because I don't really need it anymore. And let me just get one last layer. I don't want to go complete black, but I can go and maybe add, um, maybe add in a little bit darker of a layer. Okay, so there we go. Let's come up with some kind of a foreground element here. This might be some kind of a balcony or something like that. Um, definitely good opportunity now at this point in the game to leave little holes um, because what that's going to do is allow the negative spaces to show through and you're going to have some really interesting looking graphics. And, you know, let's go put some people right there if we want to put a bridge. I'm going and leading up to there. We can make flying vehicles and stuff like that, but you know, um, this video is getting pretty long, so I, I think I'm gonna, gonna call it pretty soon. Okay, just get some other kind of a building, a couple people right there. And last thing is, is like, these are just, these are really roughs. And I would do 20 or 30 of these to really try to explore and to get, um, you know, different types of shape language and different types of relationships going on as I try to get, uh, as I try to get a look and a feel for the artwork. And, um, you know, once I, once I settle on one idea and it's really pleasant, and I like the way that it looks, then maybe I'll go and spend some time and I'll flesh this out and I'll make a much um, higher res image. But you know, that's not really what Storyboard Pro is for. That's more of like a Photoshop type thing. So I'd go and spend more time in Photoshop trying to do all that, but uh, you know, not too shabby. Look at all that. Um, and um, the the cool thing is, is you know, you can always like once you're done with this and you have some kind of a a sketch already set up, you can just click over here in your thumbnails panel, press P for panel. You got a brand new sheet of paper to do another example. Okay. So, anyways, give that a try. Um, just to sum up, we're using the brush tool. We're using the O key to kind of um, make the brush bigger or smaller. We're using different um, tones, so it's a little bit lighter. And then we progressively get darker as we get closer and closer to the front of the composition. And you can just kind of turn things on and off just to see what happens as you try to get a little bit closer to the front of the composition. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed that video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.